Oh wow, isn't he gorgeous? He is stunning. Now we're very lucky at the moment with seeing all the kudu around and looking fit and healthy. We, s we actually have seen kudu almost every single game drive now and I'm definitely not going to complain. And that's what I love about nature and I, I talk about this often, how it comes in waves. Sometimes you won't see kudu bulls for weeks or months. And then now at this time of the year, we start to see them again as they sort after some females and hope to mate with them. A little bit early, but they will start soon. But it is beautiful. And there's not just one here, and this is the other thing, is that you, instead of just seeing one big kudu bull, you'll see three or four tailing after a breeding herd. And I'm gonna go forward so I can show you another one because he looked even bigger. But maybe that's just because I want him to be bigger. But let's have a look. He's just hiding under these shrubs. So I think I'm gonna try and go a little bit forward and then we'll look back at him. Or if there's a gap. Yee. It's hard. I think we're gonna have to do this gap here. Yes, that's perfect. Just we can just see his ears and his horns this afternoon. He's hiding behind a bush willow, which is making for great coverage. One of the amazing things with these kudu is, of course, they love to live in the thicket. Yesterday we were discussing about their hearing and their feeding habits, but of course the males have got these massive sets of horns. And this was one of the first things I thought to myself. I think it's one of the first questions I ever asked myself uh, when I first started guiding was how on earth do those kudu move through the bush with those big horns? And of course you can see him struggling about over there, but it's quite amazing the de design of those horns. All he has to do is point his nose towards the sky. Those horns then lay flat on his back, which allow him to, of course, move through the beautiful bushes. Ah, now George, hello to you. First question of the afternoon. It's great to hear from you, George. You're wondering what are those antlers made of? So, George, those actually aren't antlers, those are horns. Uh, antelope in South Africa don't shed them annually like deer do. They have got one set for their entire life. So it's made of keratin, it's bone, and then of course a keratin coating. Let's see if we can get another view of it. And what happens with kudu? Uh, it's been particularly kudu because of their spiral shaped horns, but when their males do start fighting quite seriously, sometimes those horns can twist and lock, and they'll end up killing one another. Like that, firstly because they can't go anywhere. I'm just gonna try and see, because there's one there, and this one is gonna move out into the open now. And they'll actually, it, one might survive, but uh, if he's lucky enough to get the other one's horns loose, otherwise they both end up dying. But it's very, very sad to see such beautiful antelope like this end up in a tangle, but it is quite common. Now, I don't know where the other boy is going. They're not really showing too much animosity between each other. They seem to be giving each other space and just moving around. I can't see the other bull now. I think he must be hiding behind some of these trees. It's a little bit thick out here. Let's go forward. Check if there's no more kudu on the left. No, no kudu on the left. Oh my goodness, they're all tucked away. Just want to show you their camouflage. That's where the females are. Just straight through there. And if you look very carefully, there's actually a tiny little calf just to the right. Here we go. Look at that. As we go in, how incredible is that? I bet you've only just spotted them. Look how tiny it is. And that's what mom's going to do, because these calves won't be very old. They've only just started to give birth in the last month or so. And it's important while they are young and vulnerable like this, that mom keeps them out of sight, out of mind. So tucked away under the thicket is a good spot. Now, Zane, you've said that kudus are your favorite. They are. They're one of the most striking antelope out in the bush with all of their beautiful markings. And then, of course, their big ears definitely stand out, as well as their white mustaches are one of the things that catch my eyes. But this little kudu most certainly has not grown into its ears. I think they get their big ears and then the rest of their body as the years go on and start to sort of become re relative in size. But standing very, very still, not moving at all, doing the very basic freeze sort of anti-predatory behavior and probably been told to, by mom as well to just sit tight and wait underneath that shrub and all that long grass but very, very cool. It's amazing. Look how we go out there. Come, come gone. I can't even see them anymore. That's unbelievable. And that's what camouflage is supposed to do, is it's supposed to hide all 
the animals away. Well, the kudu camouflage does a very good job. We're going to go across now to James, who is playing with his favourite non-human friend. Well, I don't think 